You might be in hot water to scuffle with the risk of driving in the Philippines, primarily because the traffic in Metro Manila has gotten to the point where main roads are swarmed even in the wee hours. Nevertheless, particular roads require extra care when navigating through them, because some thoroughfares will take you on the wild ride of surprise. These are the most accident-prone roads in the Philippines. <laughs>Number 10. Epifanio de los Santos Avenue. Epifanio de los Santos Avenue, commonly pertained to by its acronym EDSA, is a limited access circumferential highway around the national capital region of the Philippines. Named after the historian, jurist and academic Epifanio de los Santos, it constitutes part of circumferential road 4 or C4 of the Metro Manila's arterial road network. National Route 1 or N1 of the Philippine Highway Network, and Asian Highway 26 or AH26 of the Asian Highway Network. It starts from Bonifacio Monument Circle or Monumento in Caloocan, where the marker of the 1896 revolution is located. It will then pass into Quezon City through the Lintawak District, after an intersection with North Diversion Road, now known as North Luzon Expressway or NLEX, and Andres Bonifacio Avenue at the Balintawak Interchange. It crosses much of the northern part of Quezon City, passing through Balintawak, Munoz and Project 7 districts. It sharply curves southwards after crossing North Avenue West Avenue intersection in the Triangle Business Park. It goes on through Cubao District, entering Araneta Center after crossing Aurora Boulevard Tunnel. It curves southwards and crosses Santolan Road near Socorro. It then resumes on its route and serves as the boundary of San Juan and Quezon City. After 11 kilometers, it will eventually leave Quezon City and enter Mandaluyong City after crossing the borders of Ortigas Center. It then curves smoothly westwards after it crosses Boney Avenue and Pioneer Street and crosses the Pasig River via Guadalupe Bridge, leaving Mandaluyong City. After crossing the Pasig River, it enters Makati City through Guadalupe. After crossing Bundia Avenue, it enters Ayala Center. It then curves eastwards, continues on a straight route to Pasay City, and passing the Manila South Diversion Road, now known as Osmeña Highway, and South Luzon Expressway or Eslex, through Magallanes Interchange. It will pass to Pasay Rotunda and continues on a straight route until it crosses to Rojas Boulevard. After crossing Rojas Boulevard, it enters to Bay City Reclamation Area, The decent economic growth of the areas around it adds a significant volume of traffic and an average of 2.34 million vehicles go through it every day in recent assessments. That is the reason why it is deemed the longest and the most congested highway in the metropolis, stretching some 23.8 kilometers. The number of road mishaps from June to August 2020 has plummeted significantly compared to the same period in 2019, according to the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA. Data released showed that, from June 1 to August 31, 2020, there was a sum of 618 road crashes recorded, contradicted to 4,652 road crashes for the same period in 2019, which is an 86.72% decline. Of the 618 road crashes, 509 resulted in damage to property, 5 caused deaths and 104 had non-fatal injuries. Number 9. Shaw Boulevard. Shaw Boulevard, formerly known as Jose Rizal Boulevard or commonly known as Crossing, runs across EDSA and is just as old as EDSA itself. It is named after William James Shaw, an American philanthropist and founder of the Wack Wack Golf and Country Club in Mandaluyong City. It starts as a four-lane road at Sevilla Bridge, West End, which crosses the San Juan River, before moving towards the intersection past General Kalantong Street in Mandaluyong City. It follows a slightly curved route over Mandaluyong before crossing EDSA. It expands into four lanes per direction, with two lanes going to the flyover, and two lanes passing below. 
The flyover carries the road over Shah Boulevard MRT station and descends near Edsa Shangri-La. It becomes a dual six-lane carriageway east of Edsa, and eventually reduced to a four-lane road, and extends to C5 as Passive Boulevard East End. It is 5.265 kilometers in length, and is considered a major thoroughfare of the Ortigas Center in Mandaluyong and Pasig, housing many shopping malls. Its entirety served as a pathway for a lot of jeepney routes that go to and from Quiapo, Santa Mesa, the Jose Rizal University, Edsa, Pasig Public Market, and Dinangon and Rizal. The result, a type of road where drivers should be on their toes and always watch on their side mirrors. That is ideal and isn't the case with most people, particularly on this road where stress levels are always high and motorists are always in the hurry. In October 2019, a 25-year-old motorcycle rider deceased after she figured in a collision involving a Subaru hatchback, a Nissan Almera, a Mitsubishi Outlander, a Toyota Innova, and two passenger jeepneys at the Shaw Boulevard San Miguel Avenue intersection. An investigation showed that, before the collision, a passenger jeepney lost its brakes while traversing the Edsa Shaw Boulevard flyover to Pasig City. Without brakes, the jeepney lost its control, caused to hit the motorcycle and collide with other said vehicles. That accident resulted in heavy traffic. In September 2020, two vehicles were figured in an accident on the Edsa Shaw Boulevard flyover at about 9.30 am. While traversing the stretch of the said flyover, the Isuzu Highlander suddenly experienced a mechanical problem which led its engine to emit thick smoke. Because of the smoke, the driver of the Toyota Innova had difficulty maneuvering it and abruptly halted the left rear side of the van. No one was reported injured in the incident and both parties involved have opted to resolve the matter and chose not to file charges. Number 8. Commonwealth Avenue. Commonwealth Avenue, previously recognized as Don Mariano Marcos Avenue, is a 12.4-kilometer asphalted highway that spans from 6 to 18 lanes, and is said to be the widest in the Philippines. It became an indispensable part of the Filipinos' daily commute, due to the fact that it connects the roads which lead to Marikina, Caloocan, Manila, Rizal and Bulacan. It is designated as part of Radial Road 7 or R7 of the older Manila Arterial Road System, and National Route 170 or N170 of the Philippine Highway Network. It follows a curving route and branches out from the elliptical road, South End, that surrounds the Quezon Memorial Circle. It passes through the areas of Filcoa, Tondong Sora, Valera, Batasan Hills, and ends at the intersection with President Elpidio Quirino Highway of the National Route 129 or N 129, North End, in the Novaliches area. Its area covers the Commonwealth proper, one of the most densely district in Quezon City. Urban sprawl dominates the area with few business centers. It is known for its cacophony and high incidences of fatal road accidents. It has seen numerous pedestrian, cyclist and vehicular deaths over the years. This gave birth to its nickname Killer Highway. According to the annual report of the Metro Manila Accident Reporting and Analysis System or MMRAS, an agency of Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA, there is a sum of 23 road crashes occurred in 2019, up to 10 deaths in 2018 and 17 in 2017. Also, it is the third most accident-prone thoroughfare in the metropolis, with 4,998 vehicular accidents occurred in 2019, which is lower compared to 5,148 vehicular accidents of 2018. Number 7. Iligan City Marawi Road. Iligan City Marawi Road, officially the Malabang Marawi Iligan Road, is a 30-kilometer two-lane national primary road that connects Iligan City in Lanao del Sur to the municipality of Malabang in Lanao del Norte. It traverses through the cities and municipalities of Lanao del Sur and Lanao del Norte. The highway is designated as the National Route 77 of the Philippine Highway Network. While there are indeed also cases of vehicular accidents along the Iligan City Marawi Road, this particular road's name to fame is the number of ambushes that have occurred along its length. 
There's that time when a soldier was assassinated and seven others were injured in Pantar Lanao del Norte, and also that time, when a crew of news reporters was ambushed by motorcycle gunmen. While gunmen are always dangerous, there is also a particular part of this stretch called Overton, which is a downhill section flanked on its Marawi bound side with steep drops. Another thing compounding the potential driving hurdles on this road is the fact that there are portions that are inadequately lit. Number 6. Manjima Road. Manjima Road is a portion of the Francis Bose Sayre Senior Highway, or simply the Sayre Highway, which snatches its name from the attractive looking Manjima Rock, which is abundant in the region. It is Bukidnon's version of Kenan Road of the Mountain Province. It is host to several sharp curves, sharp ascents if you're going to Cagayan de Oro, and an equally scary descent if you're heading deeper into Bukidnon. Apart from those obstacles, the place also gets a regular coverage of fog, usual landslides, and several pieces of sheer plunges. In April 2020, a driver was burned to death after being trapped inside a burning fuel tanker, at Sitio Manjima in Tanculan Manolo Fortic at around 11 pm. According to witnesses, the driver was seen asking for help, however, no one could get near the tanker. Firefighters from the Manolo Fortic Fire Station and Del Monte Philippines immediately responded to the incident, but accordingly, they could not get close to the truck due to the tremendous fire. Number 5. Adamonan Zigzag Road. Adamonan Zigzag Road, currently known as EME Road, is one impressive landmark of Quezon Province, and the gateway between northern Quezon and the south of the Philippines. It passes over the 983-hectare Quezon National Forest Park, located inside the territorial jurisdictions of Adamonan, Pagbalao and Padre Burgos. As obvious from the name itself, it is located in Adamonan and is part of Mount Mirador, also known as Mount Pinagbandaraman, which is said to be the highest point of Quezon protected landscape. This picturesque yet deadly road became famously known as Batukong Manic by locals and motorists, as they recognize that it has an identical twisted structure to the intestine of the chicken. The name itself suggests how dangerous the path is, assuming someone understands Filipino. One of its well-known parts, which is an accident-prone area, is what locals call the Seco. It is a portion that looks like a bent elbow. It is considered by many as a place to conquer to prove their driving skills. One mistake on this part could bring them to the afterlife. Number 4. Sampaloc Road. Sampaloc Road has a length of 2.96 kilometers and is located in Tanay, province of Rizal. It is considered a hazardous road by nature, due to its sharp curves, numerous blind spots and the lack of some road safety features in some portions. There's also this very intriguing geographical feature called the Magnetic Hill, which earns this name because of the optical illusion caused by the layout of the surrounding land. Driving along it feels like going against gravity. An official of Tanay's Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office couldn't have described it better. When you're ascending, it seems like your vehicle is being prevented from going upward. When you're descending, it's like you're being pushed further downward. While it is not sure that this phenomenon has caused several accidents on this road, some other folks are assuming that it is undoubtedly a factor. In February 2017, one of the tourist buses of Panda Coach Tours and Transport carrying 50 passengers, mostly students from Best Linked College of the Philippines in Quezon City, and bound for a three-day leadership and survival training at Sacramento Adventure Camp, reportedly lost its brakes while disembarking the Sampaloc Road. According to Tanay Police, the said bus was traveling along Sitio Bayucal and was going over the downhill road when the driver reportedly lost control of the bus after its brakes failed. It swerved to the opposite lane and hit the barrier position near the road widening project of the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH. Overwhelmed by momentum, the driver purposely hit a roadside electricity post and a tree along the road around 8.45 am. The impact was strong that the roof of the bus almost got detached and it was wrecked particularly on its left side. 16 people died in the incident. Number 3. 
President Carlos P. Garcia Avenue. President Carlos P. Garcia Avenue, locally known as Circumferential Road 5 or informally known as C5 Road, is a network of roads and bridges that all together form the fifth beltway of Metro Manila. The road construction began in 1986 and it stretched some 32.5 kilometers, which connects Marikina, Quezon City, Pasig, Makati, Taguig, Pasig, Parañaque and Valenzuela. It runs parallel to the four other beltways around Metro Manila, like the MacArthur Highway in Valenzuela, North End, and the Manila Cavite Expressway in Las Piñas, South End. Its component highways are National Route 11 or N11 from Taguig to Quezon City, National Route 141 or N141 in Pasig, National Route 129 or N129 in Quezon City, National Route 128 or N128 in Quezon City in Valenzuela, and Expressway 5 or E5 in Valenzuela. It is also recognized for being the second most significant transportation corridor after Circumferential Road 4. The extent of the road from Quezon City, all the way to Taguig is no stranger to car crashes. For three successive years, it was inscribed as the deadliest road in the metropolis, based on the number of fatal accidents recorded. That is because of its road conditions as well as the existence of trucks and motorcycles along the narrow highway. Up to 55% of the road's casualties are connected to a negative vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle interface. According to the annual report of the Metro Manila Accident Reporting and Analysis System or MMRAS, an agency of Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA, it topped the list with 31 fatalities from vehicular accidents in 2019, which is higher compared to 27 deaths in 2018 and 23 in 2017. Also, it is the second most accident-prone thoroughfare in the metropolis, with 8,735 road crashes occurred in 2019, which is lower compared to 8,252 cases of 2018. Number 2. Transcentral Highway. Transcentral Highway is the gateway to reach the deepest, and arguably the best parts of Cebu. This approximately 33-kilometer highway spans from Plaza Housing in Barangay Lahug in Cebu City, to Barangay Prenza in Balamban. It offers an alternative route to both locals and tourists to be able to fully experience all that Cebu has to offer. Also, land trips to northwestern towns of Cebu, like Balamban, Tuberan, Toledo, Asturias and many other secluded cities or municipalities can be done in almost two hours only. It is for commuters who prefer a shorter time of travel, instead of taking the Naga National Road or Manipis Road that takes three to four hours of journey to and from the city. Long and quiet drives become tolerable because of its charming evergreen surroundings. The cool temperature will surely refresh every individual who passes it. It can be foggy during rainy days. Some define it as the mini Baguio in Cebu, and similar to the real Baguio, it is where the flowers were grown. Also, its long road, which looks like a long snake perfectly nestled in the middle of the Green Mountains, may be compared to the Kenan Road of Baguio City. Due to the numerous benefits that it offers, it is deemed as one of the most revolutionary innovations on the island, in terms of transportation. It is not only popular for its mystical beauty of nature but also its other backstories to tell. It is considered a hazardous one because of the multitude of jagged rocks hanging on steep slopes along its length, as well as the multiple stretches of descending and ascending portions. The sheer inclines, matched with some sharp and blind turns, make it a risky path for those who have less knowledge in mountain driving. Several accidents happened along with it, mostly motorcycle-related ones. The most famous one was the accident that happened to Iranian expatriates who were postgraduate students of the University of the Visayas, University of San Carlos and Cebu Doctors University. In June 2010, the J&G Tours bus, which is traveling from Cebu City to a resort in Tuberan for a one-day picnic outing, and carrying around 50 passengers, fell into a 30-meter deep ravine in Barangay Kansamuroy or City OC, named after the shape of the road apparently lost its brakes and went out of control at around 10 a.m., causing a casualty of 21 including the driver, while 29 were injured. A preliminary investigation showed that the driver, 
who owned the said bus, was unfamiliar with the road and was only pitching in after failing to find a driver for the trip. He took a great risk in passing through the steep highway while bringing the bus full of people. It was running at a high speed on the descending road when instead of turning left, it went straight off a cliff and flipped. If not for a small tree that stopped its fall, the bus would have plunged deeper into the mountain. The bodies were flown to the military's Central Command or CENTCOM headquarters in a helicopter and transferred to private hospitals in Cebu City. Number 1. Hulsma Highway. Hulsma Highway, also known as the Benguet Mountain Province Road, Baguio Bontoc Road or the Mountain Trail, is a national secondary highway in the Philippines. Known as the main artery of the Cordilleras Road System, the long-winded 150-kilometer road, with a lot of curves, descents and ascents, snakes along the slopes of the Cordillera Central Mountain Range through an area filled with volcanic rock formations, and serves as one of the most vital transport lines by linking Baguio City and Benguet Province to the rest of northern Luzon. It covers 95 kilometers of Benguet Province and its two to four lanes traverse eight municipalities namely La Trinidad, Tublay, Atoc, Bacad, Cabayan, Baguias, Bacan and Mangkayan. It also covers four towns of mountain province namely Bauco, Sabangan, Bontoc and Sagada. Once it reaches the village of Dante in Bontoc, the road splits into two. One road leads to downtown Bontoc while the other leads to the town of Sagada, 29 kilometers farther from the junction. Situated at 7,400 feet above sea level, Pulsma High Road Point or the Philippine Poly, located in Barangay Cadubo in the municipality of Atoc, was the highest point in the Philippine highway system in terms of altitude. It was officially recognized as such until 2019, when the 7,968 feet high point Kiangan Tinic Baguias Road in Barangay Ehab in the municipality of Tinic, was acknowledged as the new holder of the distinction. The entire highway forms a component of the National Route 204 of the Philippine Highway Network. Its component highways in the north end are the National Route 204 or N204, Mountain Province Cagayan via Tabac and Real Road, National Route 109 or N109, Nueva Vizcaya of Fugao Mountain Province Road, in Bontoc Mountain Province. National Route 206 or N206, Reverend John A. Staunton Road, in Bontoc Mountain Province. National Route 205 or N205, Tagudan Cervantes Sabangan Road, in Sabangan Mountain Province. And the National Route 207 or N207, Girl Bakat Kabayan Baguia Zabatam Road, in Baguia's Benguet. In the south end is Magsaysay Avenue in Baguio City. This highway got its name from Eusebius Julius Hulsma, a civil engineer from Ohio, who moved to the Philippines shortly after the turn of the 20th century. He eventually rose to become mayor and chief engineer of Baguio City, which was then a remote village with a few thousand inhabitants. Under his term, the construction of this sky-high road commenced in 1922 with the support of the residents and was finalized in 1930 as a foot trail. Despite its intimidating presence, it has been a fundamental part of Cordillera's history and transportation. It is the only route that vegetable farmers take to distribute vegetables in Baguio's markets. Some years ago, it was considered one of the most dangerous roads in the world. Before being paved in 2011, it was certainly the most hazardous road in the country for its dangerously sharp curves and steep elevation. Especially during rainy season, parts of the highway are risky when landslides, mudslides and falling rocks and debris tumble from peaks are common. While some motorists avoid falling into the ravine, some portions of it might be rendered impassable by such incidents thus stranding motorists for long periods, if not days. Extreme foggy conditions and slippery asphalted portions complicate the driving, turning the road even more dangerous, especially at nighttime. While the roads that are summarized here, statistically speaking are indeed hazardous, we can also argue that any road can be dangerous, due to some reason or another. Would you drive any of these roads? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.